Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting. That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the fans and welcome here on a Monday night we are super late model racing at Nashville but the twist of it is we are racing on the mini oval as it looks like drivers are getting ready to go in qualifying let's pull this on the screen really quick we are racing tonight in trip of James the King Climber uh, fixture around the Nashville area, the Highland Rim area, and uh, Justin Coleman's great uncle. So, uh, we just lost the king not too long ago. Uh, I personally did not get to see him race a whole lot because of my age and when I was going out in Nashville. But my dad and uncle, they are very, very fond of not only James Climber but the entire Climber family. So, they are in our thoughts and prayers, and we thought, what better way to celebrate? the king then to bring it here at the quarter mile in nashville the king he turned many laps around this track and uh man oh man it's only fitting to be here on the short track here at nashville as qualifying has already started as we'll get our side ticker pulled up here caleb b thompson we were just kind of riding on the side of the track as he was turning the laps there he goes up to provisional pole with a 13.75 a little bit smaller field here tonight. Uh, let's see if we can pull up Justin Coleman's car. Tribute to Mr. James Clymer, the king. So Coleman got into the session late. Did not get to put down a whole lot of practice time, but it does not matter. One lap in, one lap out, top of the board for the number 55 of Justin Coleman. As... Fellow East Car Racing teammate Brandon Elvis knocks the Coleman signs machine off the top of the leader. ECR lockout on that front row right now. Two Brandon Elvis, Justin Coleman. Still got a few heavy hitters left to roll out. I'm looking at you, Hunter Lagoons. I'm looking at you, this guy right here, the number 29 of Zach Murphy. Let's see if we can jump on board with Zach. As he's uh, getting the car up to speed here, give y'all a lap around Nashville Fairgrounds. I'll lay out and let y'all listen to the throttle. Not a lot of time on throttle. You hit it right there, folks. You're on the throttle, and then guess what? You're right back off of it. This will be a rhythm track all 
Knight, Long. Uh, Zach Murphy went P6 on the board. Brian Zimmerman in the number 28 just jumped up to P2. And now Alex E. Harris, who comes into tonight's race. Check the points. Alex Harris, he's coming into the night. He's sixth in points, but he is a race short of all these other guys. He's only done five races. Everybody else has done six. But once the drop weeks go in, that will definitely help the 74 machine out a ton. As I know, he is itching super hard. He wants that first championship here in CLR. Got that first race win a few weeks back. Now it's ready to put that check, box, check mark in the box of the uh our championship as evil knievel the black evil knievel daniel sweat winston salem north carolina what he can do here and for reference i said the black evil knievel because that car is normally white but they did a little alternate to it as oh daniel sweat done finish up both laps he's gonna be p8 on the board so not the lap 07 was looking for there if i had to guess uh, it's like Brian Zimmerman might be turning a few extra laps. He is not a fan of this style of racing. He does not like short, short tracks like this because, let's be honest, they typically can be a little messy. And I think he hit the nail on the head earlier. He said the guy who normally wins these races is not the fastest guy. It may not be the second fastest guy. It's the guy who is the most aggressive. And he's right. you got to be elbows out on a little track like this. Quarter mile in length, super late models, probably, well, there ain't no probably. In real life, they race these super late models on the big track. We thought it'd be awesome to put them here on the quarter mile in oval. I love this track. I love the mini oval. I love the big track. It is a home track to me, of course, so I'm biased there. But man, oh man, I racing did a bang out job just sitting there in the stands. As we will show it later on, I racing. I mentioned it during practice. They did a spectacular job. It's as if what it looks like identically. When you are there in the stands. Let's get that grid rocking and rolling. Looks like Brandon Elvis held provisional pole with a 13.692. Starting to his outside row number one, it is Brian Zimmerman. Then starting inside row number two, it's the James Climber replica car. Represent Elvis Coleman racing it is Justin Coleman, and but he is 55 on the side of the car. Caleb B. Thompson, 04, he is starting fourth. And we got Mr. Maple Leaf Muscle, Jason Day, number 52, representing Five Kings Motorsports, starting inside row number three. Zach Murphy in the black and red, number 20, outside. Alex C. E. Harris rolling off in seventh. Bad Company Racing on the 07. It's the Black Evil, Evil Machine. Is Daniel Sweat rolling off eighth? Brody Mears, Gun Gun, the kid, whatever you want to call him, he is the number 72, and he's rolling off in ninth. And Hunter Lagoons is playing gatekeeper to the top 10. He's gonna be firing off in 10th. Thomas Grouse, 11th. 12th, we have Kyle, the wild man, Wellman. He is actually gonna be turning laps here tonight instead of doing race control. 13th, Anthony Rennick. 14th, it says Larry Bell, but Larry Bell is feeling under the weather. So, uh, P's and P's go out to Mr. Larry Bell, representing Pit Lizard Performance. Got him a great top five in the number four car last night in the Blazing Pedals League. As you can catch that broadcast back from Martinsville here on True Sim Productions. But truth be told, you don't want to see it. Maybe just skip forward to the end. Something you do want to see. It's here at Nashville. We're racing in honor of James the King Climber. Let me pull that graphic up one more time as the pace car makes the trip, the short trip around quarter mile facility you see drivers trying to get their tires warm and man oh man i am excited i hope you are as well at home hit the thumbs up button if you can it helps out a ton as first start of the race it's going to be on green and then after that it is in the hands of the leader huge cone it's going to play a factor out here tonight as well 50 laps it's a it's a quick dash and remember we are going to re-rack them and restack them for race number two but race number one is underway and we already got carnage going to the back evil canoe machine missed the gears as daniel sweat had trouble early luckily keeps the car fo facing the direct direction i'm trying to get a camera view that has a little bit wider shot as oh no the 55 of justin coleman Looped it right in front of the field. That's not what you want to see there. 
I still no yellow on the track. Bye, oh my. Him and Alex Harrison. Alex is going around again. As I'm going to put it out for him because I don't know why there was not a yellow there. But that was insane, to say the least. Let's go back and see what happened. Now, we're going to click on this first incident up here. The Justin Coleman in them incident. Changed it. So on the start here, see Zemi just wants to fall in line. Uh, Zemi, I think, did nudge him a little bit. And then ultimately nowhere to go for Alex as well. And sends the car around. Probably going to have a black flag in the... And uh, all that. Guys, give me just a moment. My bad. We don't have race right now. He's actually out there on track. So, uh, we had to do it ourselves. We had, uh, go in there and just take care of something really quick. As I'm not a fan of the camera angles we got here. Speaking of which, I'm going to see, actually, if we have a different one. No, oh, I should probably black the fence. Don't. That's all we have for this track. So, we got what we got. We'll make it work. Still, it's going to be led by Brandon Elvis. Now, choose cone here. When the lights go off on the pace car, we are going to the choose cone. As lights are still on, Jason Day's got a decision to make here. Does he want to be outside road number one, or does he would he forgo his second place starting position to uh, start third on the inside lane, or second inside lane? On. You see, ooh, Brody Mears, the young gun. Anthony Rennick, Chance, Chance Zapp. They all roll the dice a little bit. Brody Mears goes from seventh to second. That's the choose gun right there, ladies and gentlemen. As I wish we had a camera angle, we could somewhat. As Brandon Ellis on the loud pedal here now. Brody Mears has to get down to make this all worth it. Oh, he's going to overshoot turn one. It's a 3 4 wide here. This guys in the middle of the pack. They're trying to make it work. Get in where they fit in, but you can't really fit in a lot here. As Brody Mears, he tried. And, but actually, even with that gamble, it all worked out because the kid is now sitting fourth. Gained three spots from the choose cone there to the number 72. A lot of wheel lock up there out of Hunter Lagoons in the number 27. And oh no, chance that might be going around right there in front of Alex D. Harris. And another guy going around. And we're going to throw the yellow again, I guess. So another caution out. We saw that happen basically right on the screen in front of us. I saw chance sap starting to go around a little bit here. So watch the yellow and white number 16. Just gets into the throttle too hard. Gets past the wall up, stay off the wall. Nowhere for the 23 to go. He locks it up, and he's actually fine. We do see sweat going around, though. Hey, there was a lot going on here. And, oh, yes. That's what I thought. 16 did clip the 07, sending him around. Press that happen. Dana Sweat takes it down track side. Kyle, the Wildman Wellman, takes it down pit side. As Wellman might be parking it to do race control.
And lap number 16, caution laps, they are counting. And remember, I didn't get hit on it a lot earlier. Double header night, twin 50 lap events. Whoever wins this race, well, guess what? You're starting dead last in the second race. So, And full points is on the line. So you can sandbag the first race if you want to try to play the invert game. But you're going to be leaving a lot of points out there on the table. And for the ones like Brian Zimmerman, Jason Day, Alex E. Harris, Justin Coleman, they cannot afford to leave points on the table. As they're coming to choose, going Caleb B. Thompson. He's going to let them hang. He jumps to the outside lane. Hunter Lagoons does as well. So your top four, they all elected to go to the bottom. Brody also chose the bottom after making some gains there. Granted, he did have a moment, right, but made some gains there. Let's see what happens here. 54 is going to fire him off on the lob pedal. 04 not able to get down. Jason Day closes that door. Little door breaking action on the 52 and 04. That's going to shove the 04 back even further. Brian Zinnerman right now trying to make a pass over the 04. And oh, Zinny's getting getting stacked up right there and jacked up by the 72. Four contact. Hunter Lagoon's hard into the inside wall and just piles him in there. No yellow once again. I don't know why the cautions are not flying. That is getting annoying. Man, oh man. Hunter Lagoon's in no fast repair, guys. So whenever they wreck out here, they got what they got. They got to get the damage fixed as best they possibly can under these quick yellows, which is basically non-existent in order to have enough time to get the car fixed. So we went back pretty far here. Go far, Chase. Let's kind of see what happened. Hunter, Hunter was loose there off, off turn two a little bit. Oh, he tries to get down in front of the young gun, and ultimately there's no room there. Let's see what happened to Zach Murphy also going around there. Oh, and Zach flips Anthony Rennick as he's going around. Guys just need to pay attention. The track's not that difficult. The track itself's hard enough. You can't be idiots and uh, goofy out here. Although that, I mean, Zach's just trying to get turned around right, but... And oh man, tough break for the 29 car right there, of course, as uh, he's also somebody in the point mix in the battle. So he's going to look to try to make up some fights here. Jason Day, he's got that uh, second place position still. Him and Brian Zimmerman, they have been linked up on the bottom along with our race leader, Brandon Elvis. Will they roll the dice and take it to the outside lane? I think right now you'd be silly to. As lights are off on the pace car. Brandon Elvis going to lead him as you see Justin Coleman. He took the outside starting position there. As Coleman washes out wide. He's got to be careful right there. Going to get loose up there in the marbles. Can he get clear of the 52? He was clear for a moment there, but not long. 52 cars not having any bit of it as they're leaning on each other. You're going to see that here at this short track. That's going to hurt the 55 though of Coleman. Now Zimmerman to his inside as Coleman jumps down quick there. Takes over P3 away from Brian Zimmerman and we are under caution once again as these guys are racing hard in spurts. Looks like Zach Murphy once again here. A little bit of wheel lock up there. Got into the back of Brody. And they are still just hitting each other. Oh, tough lick for Murphy. That's going to be catastrophic damage for the, for the 29 there. 15 car around of Thomas Grau as well. As guys, I don't know what we're doing out here. Besides a little bit of a demolition derby. Brody Mears. Been involved in a couple of them now. 
goofing off in practice. Uh, those right there don't goof off in practice turn actual little laps. Far clean. They're going to be all Brandon Elvis out front with Jason Day starting P2. Justin Coleman's in third. Thomas Grell, also a Nashville native. He's seen and watched many laps down here. Looks like he will have the free, the free pass spot. It's the mini oval. We got to expect a little bit of carnage, I guess. You wait for the lights to go off on the gender neutral race car out front. 24 people watching out in viewer land. Please do us a favor if you can. Hit that thumbs up button. It helps us out a ton here at TSP. As the lights are off on the pace car, Coleman lets him hang once again, taking that outside lane. He has a teammate in Brandon Elvis. It could be seeing a countdown happen here. They are in the same Discord channel together. But Coleman has one go, one mission. Has to get down in front of that 52. Pace car is off. Brandon Elvis on the loud pedal. He makes him wait a little bit that time, though. 55 is going to be door to door with the 54. And oh no, 54 is going. Man, oh man, 04 is going around. That all started up front. Still no caution. As I guess race control did not deem it caution. As 28 looking to the inside of the 54. Not able to get there though. The 54 had so much momentum just firing off really strong. The car's on rails right now. On board. Riding on the roll bar of our race leader, Brandon Elvis, there. The good shots are coming to you at the camera. You're seeing them guys really having to work that steering wheel. Cars have too much power for this little track. As Brandon Elvis opening it up a little bit, commanding of a lead here. Justin Coleman trying to get to the back bumper of that USAFirearms.com number 28. But just not able to clear enough real estate on entry. He's sacrificing the exit a little bit. He's driving in there a lot deeper than the 28 is. 28's able to really roll that corner. Let's jump on board with Coleman here. On board with the Go Chain Cowboy. Indeed, not on no Sunday driving. No, we got a red happening right in front of the leaders. Yellow is out. Man, oh man. Brandon Elvis, race leader involved. Zach Murphy's on his lid. And our race leader don't even have a front clip on that car. I don't even know if we want to go back and watch this one. See what happened? Obviously, we gotta go back further than that. Like it started here between the 07 and the 29 car. Right on the drone shot. No, 07 is trying to get the pits. They had not had it called out in time. There you see, I mean, the rest of it's history. Zach Murphy's like a turtle. Zimmy, he's trying to get turned around. Loses his front clip. Guys going through each other. As it stands currently, Go Chain Cowboy. He will be your race leader. Heartbreak. Let number 54. The one good thing he has going for him right here is he'll get a new car for the second race, and the invert's going to work well in his favor. Won't be starting first in the next race. He'll be starting up towards the front at least. 
That very Elvis performance fabrication machine has seen better days. This is starting to look like a front wheel drive four cylinder real life race here on the mini oval. Jason Day takes the outside lane with eight laps to go for race number one. How fitting is it? A 55 is leading this train around the mini oval. Awesome sight to see. As Coleman jumping on that loud pedal gets a great launch. 16 knocks the back tires off. That's going to force Jason Day out really wide. Had to swing out to make sure the 16 had plenty of room to save the car. Chance to sap, though. Power move here starting inside row number two. Looks like he's going to try to take the position away. Him and Jason Day going door to door here. As there's six laps to go. Going to be five this time by the stripe. Jason Day watches up really high there. He's trying to fight on the outside at 16. 16 locks him up big time into the corner. Throws the 52 up a little bit. And oh no, that's going to be a wreck right there. Hooks right in front of the field. As, whoa, that's a hell of a shot there. As we saw that one brewing for a few laps. Now, who started it? Who was at fault? I'll leave that for y'all to decide. What we do know is 16 got turned up on his side. And went for a wild, wild ride. But we're going to find this back a little ways. A bit of door in action there. No harm, no foul, right? We're short track racing. Right here. Looks like Chance may have heard clear from his spotter, but clear he was not. Right on the board here with Chance Sap. Goes for a wild ride. Tough break there for the thing, as that is going to end race number one prematurely for him. Three laps to go. Green, white, checker time here, ladies and gentlemen. You thought it was intense before. Uh, getting ready to see. About to be ratcheted up a few clicks. As lights should go off on the iRacing pace car this time by, I would imagine. As Big Phoenix out in the chat says, go Zimmerman. That was probably a message long ago. Been a lot going on. They have been rough. They have been rowdy. Thanks for the 52 car of Jason Day. Has been second, third all night long. Now he just has to try to climb and bounce back. Justin Coleman though on the loud pedal. Will this be the final restart of the night? As Hunter Lagoons in the game of where the hell did he come from to the outside lane here. Got the young gun Brody Mears to the inside. Hunter's going to try to get clear. As I hear and see carnage. Alex e. Harris going to get the car turned around. White flag in the air. Final time of the night for race number one. If all goes well, we should go into the nighttime, but the daytime race one winner, it's fitting. It's the 55, it's the James Climber replica. It's Justin Coleman parking that thing in victory lane. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. Got a lot of people rooting for you there. Uh, you started P2, P3, I believe. You parked that 55 in victory lane once more. As... I wish we had a little downtime in between, but we don't. We're right to it again. Race number two coming at you. As we're going to pull up the grid, but folks, bear with me. It's going to be a little wonky. People's in the session. Some people's not in the session. So your actual starting row is going to be Zach Murphy in the number 29. Going to have Daniel Sweat in the 07 starting outside him. Brandon Elvis 
led a majority, majority of race number one. Had an incident happen out in front of him, nowhere for him to go. Up to 54 car scrambling and ultimately wrecked. He's going to be firing off right there in row number two. Chance Sapp to his outside. Alex C. Harris, then Brian Zimmerman starting six. Seventh is going to be Anthony Rennick. Eighth, Thomas Grau. Ninth, Jason Day. Tenth is going to be Caleb B. Thompson as we cycle on down a little bit. Eleventh, Hunter Lagoons. Twelfth, Brody Mears and the Gold Chain Cowboy. He's going to be firing off in 15th due to being the big time race winner of race number one. And that's just, that's so fitting, man. So fitting. So awesome. So cool to see. Now, he's got a mountain of a task at hand. Starting shotgun on the field. You've seen what race number one was. Let's call it what it is. It was a crap shoot, right? It was a little messy. Will race number two be along that same recipe? Well, truth be told, fans, I'm kind of expecting it. But we shall see. It's been entertaining. It's one of them times I'm glad to be in the booth and not on the track. Because as a driver, you're thinking points. You're thinking championship. Man, oh man, you're stressed out. I'm having a good time. And folks, I hope you are as well. Hit that thumbs up button, please. And as these boys are about to go green flag racing once more. 50 laps here around the Nashville Mini Oval. As I see, it did not get nighttime either. So our racing has yet to fix that. Brandon Nevis power move to the inside. Was not able to make it stick. Had to back out of it a little bit. Zach Murphy is going to be real stout competition up at the front of this field it's gonna be hard to pass and look at the battle we got going on back here caleb e. thompson going around right in front of the field as caution flies for the first time for race number two Zach murphy will be the man to lead them back folks we're going to throw it to commercial really quick i promise you won't miss a second of the action we'll be back momentarily As we are back, I want to send a huge shout out to Tripods in the Wild. Check them out here on YouTube. Check them out on TikTok, Facebook, basically every social media platform. Check them out, Tripods in the Wild. And of course, we would be nothing without USAFirearms.com. See it down at the bottom right of your screen. And of course, we all know the reason we are here tonight. James the King Climber racing in heaven tribute for the King around the quarter mile mini oval at Nashville won the first race going back green flag racing here pace cars off 29 gonna lead him to the stripe there got Brandon Elvis who led most of the laps firing off to the outside he let him hang he took the outside lane now, Brian Zimmerman was trying to capitalize on the inside lane, but he might like starting in that P3 spot. You've seen him stack up here in the middle portion of the pack. I saw Anthony Rennick with a big lockup with the left front. These cars, they don't have good brakes. 
And you can tell here, you need to be on them. You need to be on them hard. See we can jump back on board with Go Chain Cowboys. He's already up to fifth. Mama, here comes that bad, bad man. Slicing and dicing his way up through the field. And I'm going to lay out and let y'all listen to the throttle play. And never mind, because we are back under caution. I don't think Go Chain minds have these cautions, because he is picking up spots quickly on every restart. As, oh no, it may be Maple Leaf Muscle, I believe so, and Caleb B. Thompson that went around. So we can get the replay pulled up. <laughs> Caleb just rode the corner way better than Day did. I don't know if Day had to wait on it. Couldn't get the car to actually feel like it rotated or what. Caleb just rose the corner. And it was weird. Day did have a car to his outside, though, so he was not able to pick the throttle up like he normally would. I just don't think the 04 machine could anticipate that. What about Go Chain? Up 11 spots. At a track they said is almost impossible to pass that. I think he ain't seen a few laps done here. Be taken. What a facility, though. What a facility. As a fellow, I'm just a spectator now that goes down and watches races at Nashville. I'm uh, biased when I think about NASCAR returning. Do I think it'd be cool for the venue? I do. Do I think it would kill the local short track aspect of it? I do. I'm torn on it. Torn on it. Maybe they could attract ARCA again like they uh, have done. Fast and maybe get a truck series race there. Heck, even Xfinity. Right now we have super late models for the Crooked Line Racing late model city monday night madness and it has been great madness presented by usafirearms.com your leader in ar-15s and ar-15s accessories check them out i promise you you're not going to find any better deals on any other website gun broker it does not matter usafirearms.com thank them for being the presenting sponsor here as we're going back green flag racing one more time as Zach Murphy, he don't make him wait this time. He gets on the lap of Alex C. Harris. A bold move. Drives it down in there. That's a move that will uh, not make you any friends, but he's not out here to make friends. He's out here to make money. And right now, he's making positions. Takes away P P2 away from Brandon Elvis. Now, Elvis, a man on an island out there. You just got to wonder when you're on the outside, when's the next caution going to fly? He's trying to get down, but teammate... Justin Coleman, he knows these positions. They're hard to get, and you got to take them when you can. As oh, our race leader, Zach Murphy, locked him up big time there. And Coleman and Elvis putting on a show. They are teammates, but I promise you, Coleman wants to beat Elvis as bad as he wants to beat everybody else out here, and vice versa. As Elvis, though, looks like, oh, he missed the corner there. Drove it off in there way too deep. More door banging action. As they are letting it all hang here at Nashville. As you, I'm afraid to take the camera off of them. One of them's got to win this battle pretty quick. 55 car locks up the left front down there in the grass. Trying to get that car to rotate. As 54 car finally succumbs to the battle. But the war is not over, I don't believe. But now the 55 has the task of trying to chase down Alex C. Harris. And our race leader, Zach Murphy. Murphy comes into tonight's race. Second in the point standings. He does not have a race win yet. He has two top fives and six top tens on the season. Ryan Zimmerman comes into tonight's event as the points leader. Murphy getting a race win right here could be huge for him. Especially with Ryan Zimmerman currently slotted back in fifth. Not a bad night, still a top five, but it's not a Brian Zimmerman night. He already has two race wins on the season. I mentioned it earlier, not a fan of this track. 
Right now, it looks like we are at halfway to go, but I promise you, you gotta go now. The laps, they click off too fast. 13 seconds around here, 14 seconds. So you have to go. You don't have time to wait around. Look at Alex C. Harris trying to get as low as he can. Trying to cut that corner as much as he can in the grass and the dirt right there. But right now, Zach Murphy, he is in control of this until he isn't. And what I mean by that, Zach, or Alex C. Harris, he can get up there and try to move to 29 at any time right now. He's within striking distance. I think that Ford Mustang is going to have to use that chrome horn a little bit. Zach Murphy, he's a veteran on the sim. He's not going to make very many mistakes. You might see him lock up once or twice, but that's what that's it. That's all you're going to get out of 29. And Zach, right now, it's eyes forward. See the rotor starting to glow on the 29, though. He's really having to use a lot of brake pressure to get that car woed up. Brandon Elvis back here in P3, not able to get up in the mix. It was Justin Coleman the last time we looked, so something obviously happened to the 55 machine that allowed Zimmerman and Elvis by. Now Elvis has a tall order ahead. Let's jump on board with Mr. Brandon Elvis. He can see the leaders up there. Early, he sees them out the windshield. It's cat and mouse game right now. What Brandon needs as a yellow is out. That's what Brandon needed. But Brandon really needed our top two to get the racing, duking it out. See if we can find this caution. This, ooh, this one looks like it could have been a big one. Don't know if it started with the 07 here or not. As old Coleman into the outside wall, loses the front clip on that 55 machine. And oh no, was just so far down on power, down on speed. 07 gets into the back of him, gives him a little kiss, but really nowhere for the 07 to go there of Daniel Sweat. I guess in his mind. We saw Coleman, he hit the outside wall. Obviously the car was not tip top shape after hitting the wall. Did not hit it hard though. It was kind of weird to see the damage the front end of that uh, car the way it was. It did not pancake the wall all that hard. I've seen them. I've seen harder here at Nashville for sure in real life and on sim. Folks, I got to ask you one more time. Did you like the video? It helps us out a ton here at Tristan Productions. We are also on the road it was to 500 subscribers, and you all killed that. We passed that one, shoot, a month and a half ago. But now we're on the road to 1K, 1,000 subscribers. If you could hit the subscribe button, that helps us out more than anything. The thumbs up helps a lot, and we will definitely take them. But if you can hit that subscribe button, you'll never miss a single lap of the action. As we are live damn near seven nights out of the week. And also on Saturday nights, Bruce Sim Productions' very own podcast called Race Chatter. We recap all things True Sim Productions, all the league races that we do throughout the week. And it's completely unfiltered. So we have a lot of laughs, a lot of alcoholic beverages on that show. Again, that is on Saturday night starting 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. Check us out here on YouTube. Race Chatter, unfiltered. As the lights are off on the pace car, only 15 laps to go here for Zach Murphy to claim his first race win of the season. But now Brandon Elvis is going to have a lot to say about that. So is the 74. 74 is going to get aggressive here. Drives it in there deep. 54 car was a little loose. May have had a little bit of help there, but gets clear. Now what's the 74 going to do? Now he's went from P2 to P3. Brandon Elvis took the outside lane and he made it work. It looked like Brody Mears was having a little bit of issues back there getting off the corner of turn two. As Brandon Elvis getting into the outside wall on the front stretch. Just 12 moves left for the Whitney Automotive number 29 Chevy Camaro. when they're coming to us. Going to be 10 laps to go here, ladies and gentlemen, at the strike. It is still Zach Murphy here for race number two. You're seeing drivers getting to that outside wall pretty often now. That shows they're pushing. They're trying to get everything they can out of the car. 
Will Brandon Nevis put the bumper to the 29 machine here. Can he get there? That I believe Brandon is either the Firebird, oh Pontiac. Can he get the Pontiac power down enough in the 54 to get up there and get to the 29? The 29 looks like he might be a little tight on entry, but he is making up for all that in tenfold on exit. Really getting off the corner really quick. He's entering a little softer, but he has that luxury right now. But how much longer does he have that luxury? Because the 54 is there. Brandon Nelvis knocking, honey, I'm home. And we got a car around in the middle of the pack. The 23 car, Anthony Rennick. And I didn't see exactly how it started, but I saw the car go around. Let's see what happened here to Rennick. Quite a bit of room between him and the 28. Oh, 28 just gets there and gets into the side of him a little bit. I don't know how these guys are clearing that much real estate. Did Rennick miss the corner right there? It was definitely a little higher on entry. I'm not sure. Going to be, uh, I believe, a green-white checker here. Food race number two of the night. Remember, once again, while we are here, James, the King Climber. 1940 to 2024 up there racing in heaven with that number 55 and the 05 and old gang we caught him a king around these ways for a reason knew his way around the fairgrounds knew his way around Highland Rim going to be thoroughly missed that was so cool 55 car back in action here tonight. It's one good thing about our racing. We can preserve a lot of stuff. That 55 car, no matter what, it might be angled up here. It may be running six now, but it won the first race. And it made the second race really interesting the way he was able to come up to the field, get up there, and lead some laps. All right, lights off on the pace car. Is this going to be the final test, the final battle for the 29 to pick up his first race win of the season? Or is Alex C. Harris going to play Fuller? Alex has two race wins of the season. Brandon Elvis has not picked up a race win yet this season. He's done four races. But right now, Alex took the high side and he is paying for it. As Brandon Elvis able to just rotate the corner way better. As white flag in the air, it's going to be official like a referee's whistle. Can the 54 get to the 29? And look at the 27. It's the game of where the hell he come from once again. Up to P3. Going to try to take a podium spot as he does. And Zach Murphy picks up his first race win of season number 12. Brandon Nevis finishes P2. Hunter Lagoons once again. And the where the hell did he come from? Brought the car home in P3. He's a dirt track kid. And I call him a kid because he's young. And he does it. I mean, he does it good. Whether it's on asphalt or whether it's on dirt. And this winning moment is brought to you by BAM Racing Videos. Check out BAM Racing Videos on YouTube. It's Brandon Mettler. He travels all across the southeastern portion of the United States. To so many asphalt tracks, dirt tracks. Does work with Hunt the Front, Flow Racing. Check him out. Bam Racing Videos. Zach Murphy picking up the first race win of the season at the midway portion of the season. This might just be the time that 29 gets hot. And if he gets hot, it's going to be tough for a lot of these drivers. All right, let's see if we can get caught up with our third place driver. As I felt like we played the game earlier, where the hell he come from was race number one. He backed that up with race number two. Mr. Lagoons, you're live in the booth. Got a copy. Here we 
Yeah, I got you. I feel like you, uh, you kind of live up here. You're always up here talking to me in the booth, finishing on these podiums. It's impressive, though, here on Asphalt, how good you've been running as of late. Talk me through uh, tonight's second race there, boss. Uh, yeah, I was started deep from the invert, and I was just all about surviving and playing my cards right, really. So, uh, so. I mean, we saw it, right? There were some cautions in the first race and in the second race. It's going to be expected here. Coming from coming from the dirt side to a track like this, how tough was it for you to get accustomed to this track? Um, I sucked in practice. Like, that hour and a half of practice, I was terrible. And then just, you know, it was just luck. It's just all luck, really, just being able to avoid the wrecks and stuff. Well, that's more than luck. I mean, luck definitely plays a part in it, right? We're all... <laughs> Uh, Zach Murphy for him to win now. He got lucky that Brandon never somebody didn't get into him, right? I mean, it's all a little bit of luck into it. But at the end of the day, you got to put yourself in a position. And Mr. Hunter, you did that. Brought the car home P3. Who we got to thank on the number 27, boss? I want to thank um, Five Kings. You know, they, uh, they've been helping me a lot here lately, allowing me to race with them. Uh, I want to thank you for putting on the uh, broadcast and uh, Chris Carroll because he's helped a lot here recently also. Absolutely, boss. Well, thank you, Hunter, for that, and congratulations, everybody, on coming home, Pete. Yep, thank you. Yes, sir, boss. And then it was time to talk to the second place, man. The bridesmaid here tonight. It is Brandon Elvis. Brandon, you live in the booth, brother. Do you got a copy? Yes, sir. I know the first race pissed you off, right? Running up front, and then uh, I don't even know what the hell happened, honestly. So let's don't even forget about let's just forget about that. The second race, you started up to the front, and I think you actually were faster than Zach, but the way the cost fell, couldn't ever get around him. What'd you need to beat that twenty nine car? Yeah, I just needed needed laps really. Um I when I was trying to catch him, I was ever driving. Then when I got there I started kinda mentally backing myself down a little bit and was able to get a little bit better drive up off, I think. Um, like he might have been getting a little tight, so <sighs> I needed just needed laps. That's what we always want, right? Laps. And 50 laps, it probably was too short, but you brought the car home, P2. Who we got to shout out and who we got to thank on that number 54 car, boss? Um, Coleman Design, Justin Coleman. Um, shout out to him and his family. I know a lot of them are probably watching. I uh, just want to let them know they're in our thoughts and prayers. That's why we raced here tonight. And um, Justin had an awesome looking car tonight. Um, Barry Elvis Performance, Chestnut Hill to Restaurant, my wife. BH Jones Construction, Gibbs Brothers Construction, Parker Brothers Winter Tenton, Shock Out Performance, um, my team at ECR, uh, you guys in the booth for putting us on and for putting the league on. It's a lot of fun when I do show up. ECR was bad fast, locked out the front row there for a little bit, but oh well, you live and you learn, you got P2, not a down night, finishes on a high, congratulations there, boss man, Mr. Elvis. Thank you, man, Thank you. congratulations to Zach on the win there. I don't, boss. All right, folks, you heard it there from Elvis Coleman Racing, one of the two. Brought the car home in second. And then there was one. Let's get him up here. We got him live in the booth now. Let's get this thing up here. Mr. Zach Murphy, you got your race win now finally this season. Do you got a copy? I got you, bud. How you doing? Man, I'm doing good. You're probably doing better. You're probably mad after the first race, right? But then with that invert, put you up front, talking through the second race and how chaotic the restarts felt for you. Yeah, I was just talking to Jason Day. I was saying I felt like a bowling pin in the first one. I was just getting hit by everything. But, uh, yeah, second race, the track position definitely helped. Uh, it will start on pole, run some clean laps and cautions early. And, uh, yeah, I think probably on a, fa a longer run, maybe Elvis would have would have been uh, a factor there. But luckily I had that caution at the end and was able to just get a good jump and put her in victory lane. Well, I called it middle portion of this race. I said, you let somebody like Zach Murphy get out front, it's going to be hard to pass him, right? Not a lot of mistakes will come out of the 29 car. but those late race restarts, how much are you up on the wheel knowing you got a bunch of hungry drivers right there just waiting to beat that back bumper off? Yeah, I mean, the inside line obviously was preferred, and the big thing for me was just not overdriving one. I feel like I overdrove it a few times tonight, and at the end I was like, all right, I just got to go easy in here and, and get off good. So, yeah, I was glad those guys kind of battled it out, and I was able to just pull a little gap and you know, <laughs> stay in front. Like you said, just trying to stay consistent is a big thing here, especially on a track like this. Right, and it don't matter if there's been a hundred cautions or flag to flag. You got to be consistent on a quarter mile track, and you did just that here for race number two. Zach, who we got? To thank here tonight, brother, getting that first victory of the season. Yeah, well, thank uh, Whitney Automotive on the side of the car. Thank uh, Caleb down in race room three. Always, uh, 
always chat with him during the race. He's a good help. Uh, thank you guys over at um, Crooked Line and TSB for a, you know a great league, great broadcasts, and then just a shout out to the uh, to Justin Coleman and his family, and uh, just thinking of them and the loss of of the King there. I'm just glad we could you know have a race for him tonight. Right on, boss. So congratulations here, race winner number two, Mr. Zach Murphy. Alrighty, folks, we are going to start to close up shop here tonight. As it will not let me pull the results tabs up. And that is because we had a heat race prior to the feature event. So let me get this off the screen. Get that pulled up. James the King Kleiner up there racing in heaven. That is why we were here tonight in the results for race number two. Zach Murphy, Brandon Elvis, Hunter Lagoons. That was your podium one, two, and three. Alex C. Harris had him a strong night. I know he wanted more, but still, top five. He finished fourth with the young gun, the kid, Brody Mears, bringing home fifth. And sixth, it was the 55, the climber replica, Justin Coleman. He won the first race. He finished sixth in the second race with Caleb B. Thompson starting or finishing seventh. Thomas Growl, glad to have Growl out here. He brought the car home in eighth. Maple Leaf Muscle, Jason Day had some trouble, brought the car home ninth. Brian Zimmerman, I know he's not a fan of the track, and he's definitely probably not happy with the way that race shook out for him. He brought the car home 10th. 11th, Anthony Rennick. 12th, Daniel Sweat. 13th was Chance Sapp. Larry Bell was scored as 14th, and Kyle Wellman was 15th. Folks, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. And Brandon Elvis, Zach, they hit the nail on the head. Thinking of the Coleman Climber family, you are in our thoughts and prayers, of course. And Larry Bell, feeling under the weather today. Uh, thinking about you too, boss, and uh, excited to get you back out here on track with us, old man. So, guys, want to thank y'all for tuning in. As always, it was a special night. It was something that I jumped at the opportunity to do. I hope y'all enjoyed it. It was a little messy, but it's quarter mile racing here on iRacing. It's to be expected. We were racing for calls here tonight, and folks, want to thank y'all again for tuning in. We'll be back out on track tomorrow for the All-Star Racing League. Late model stocks with Winston Deal, WD Broadcasting, calling all the action live from TSP. Until next time, folks, we'll see ya.